Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. DeGangie reporting for the Media Speaks. And we're going to get right into the news for you. Um, I want to go ahead and mention this real quick because for a long time, I've been living without banks. It's very easy to do. Um, I'm not going to go over exactly how to do it here because it's already written. I wrote it. It's called How to Live Without Banks. Took me forever to think of that name. How to Live Without Banks. Mediaspeaks.com. I mention that because banks are one, one of the huge problems. One of the, one of the biggest problems, if not uh, maybe the biggest man-made disaster other than maybe nuclear war or nuclear armaments, I should say. Banks. Central banking. The whole banking industry. If, you, if you're new to the show, like I had, I had somebody on this Mind Rot Top 40 channel the other day. I'm a DJ. I have to go there. Um, tell me that my show was boring. That's because if what I'm about to talk about bores you, then don't complain about not having anything. Don't complain about how expensive things are, and to some degree, don't even complain about how bad jobs are. Because all of this, to some degree, can be set, can be traced back. Can I prove it? Yeah, I can prove it. Look up Ron Paul, Central Banking. Alex Jones, Central Banking. Sometimes I agree with Alex Jones, sometimes I don't. Um, I don't think just because somebody, for instance, is hired by a country to do something once, that that means that we hired them to do it forever. Like, Alex is a very huge believer that, we f that we're deliberately... How do I want to word this? He believes that the government is paying these people to do something, always. Whereas I think a lot of these groups were created by the government to do something. They were useful idiots for a minute, and then it was more like the Frankenstein monster later on. Was it a bad idea? Yeah, Alex and I both agree there. That's why I watch him. I mean, but like I said, my point being, there's nuances to this. Okay, there's nuances to it. And a lot of those nuances point right back to banking and central banking. So go to themediaspeaks.com, look up how to live without banks, and uh, let's, let's get into this here. Um, Mark Carney in Telegraph reports this. Mark. Carney confirms contingency plan after Scottish bank run. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but they're having a problem with Scotland and England and their relationship and the future of their money. So what they're doing is putting things in place, certain plans in place to prevent bank runs. You know what a bank run is? A bank run is when something for some reason causes you to want to get your money out of the banking institution because you think that something is going to happen. We already know that banks obviously don't have the, all the money that's invested in their bank at the premises of the bank. So only so many people can get to their money. I'm explaining what a bank run is for new listeners. If they have things in place to prevent this, do you think that the CEOs, or the, the big dealers are going to lose money? Do you think it's going to be you? Okay, don't have your money in a bank. How? How to live without banks? Mediaspeaks.com. But it says the Bank of England's governor has confirmed contingency plans have been drawn up following warnings of a run on Scotland's banks if the Nationalists win next month's independence referendum. Um, I don't want to bore you with a lot of economic top talk, but. I will say this, this is alarming. Although he has refused to specify his plan B, Mr. Solbin has hinted that Scotland would keep on using the pound unilaterally in the same way that countries like Panama have dropped the U.S. dollar. Uh, all this is really boring. All my, all my listeners are going to go straight to sleep. But I want to say this because it matters. They're having a mess. And if you want to read the whole boring mess, I just told you, you can find it at telegraph.co.uk. Confirms contingency plans for Scottish bank run. All my facts are there. I'm not making it up or anything. But if you want the short version, there's about to be, or there could potentially be, a huge problem 
in Scotland, England dealing with their currency. I suggest buying gold, silver, platinum. Um, don't keep your money in banks, people, because it's, got, it's not just going to stay in England and Scotland. These problems will permeate into other countries. And first it was Cyprus, then it was Poland, and everyone said, oh, it can't happen in America. Sam, you're being crazy. Put your money in banks. Banks are notorious for letting creditors and everyone else into your accounts. Look up banking haircut. For those of you that might not know, uh, they did it to Cyprus. They just decide that everybody who has the next amount of dollars has to contribute so much money to get the, the, the country or the banks out of debt. That's what they do. Mail online, uh, dailymail.co.uk, outcry over tax man's plan to settle debts by delving into people's bank accounts so they can help themselves to money. Yes, the tax man, if you owe taxes, now this again, I believe this is going on in England, but oh, England is just so different than the US, right? We're so radically different, even though we have the same uh, financial structure for the most part. HMRC has a was accused yesterday of taking a smash-and-grab approach with its demand for new powers to seize money directly from people's bank accounts. Britain's leading tax experts warned the taxman's risk being unconstitutional with the controversial plans which could come into force within months. Months. Again, why am I reporting on this stuff? Because if it went from Cyprus to Poland and now England and Scotland's in this and you've got uh, protections against bank runs because Scotland may uh, it's become its own entity to some degree, you've got worries now about the tax man wanting in your bank account. There's all kinds of people telling you when you can get your money, how you can get your money, how much of your money you can get if you leave it in banks. So don't. The proposed new powers, which were published in the budget to the subject to a public consultation, which closed yesterday, have triggered an outcry among tax experts. It says if, uh, what is playing? What, what, what annoying site has, a, has, a, has just started playing music? I really hate when pages do this. Who's with me on that? So they want to go ahead and let the tax man you can, we, we can get your taxes out of here this way. This is a great way to go ahead and get taxes from you. So at what point do so many people have the ability to get into your bank account that you simply no longer, you might not want to go to that site that plays that annoying music. You may just want to know that I'm telling you the truth because if you go there, you're going to have to put up with that. Daily Mail. That's why, that's why people don't read you anymore. That's why they listen to me tell you about it. Um... <laughs> How many hands can get into one bank account, people? How many hands do you want into your bank account? You might not even be able to get your own hand into the bank account. So, hey, quit using banks. And don't tell me you need it for your job. You need it to cash checks. All of that is covered, um, How to Live Without Banks. It's an article at TheMediaSpeaks.com. No, I'm not selling anything. The article is up there for free. I ask one thing, one thing. If you read it, share it. Uh, Mint. Pressnews.com. It's a video. Refugees fleeing Islamic State have nowhere to go. I have spent time and time and time going over the things that I do not like about Islam. And I keep saying that... I don't want to word this. I keep saying that my problem isn't with the average Islamist that I'd like to go and have a beer with. My problem is with the people that tend to rise to the top as leaders. That's my same problem with um, America. We do not have the best and brightest leading us. We have Bushes, Obamas, and Clintons. We don't have Ron Pauls and Gary Johnsons leading us. So I wanted to go ahead and give some positive light. I wanted to give good reviews, good news, if you will, to the good Islamists. And there's some in this story. Listen to this. I want to make sure I get to this. I am not anti-Islamist. I'm anti, become my religion or I'll cut your head off. Uh, Herbal Iraq, the Kazir refugee camp was bursting at its seams early last week. Over 5,000 people had sought refuge there with around 200 new families turned away every day. 
The crowded camp was hastily set up in the aftermath of Islamic State's sweeping victory over Mosul at the start of June and the sudden exodus of residents from the city fearing attacks by militant extremists. The Kurdistan regional government, it goes on, originally set up the camp in collaboration with the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees. The camp's residents were put under Kurdish protection, then thousands of people fled Mosul, seeking refuge in the Kurdish autonomous region in Iraq. Again, they went in, they, they, broke, they broke the crosses off the churches. Um, Jonah, the, the, the whale, the, the tomb of Jonah, one of the oldest historic monuments in existence, was destroyed by ISIS. The camp now lies abandoned after Islamic State militants advanced toward it on Thursday. Kurdish Peshmerga forces pulled back from the camp and the surrounding areas. It lies right outside of the Kurdish government's borders and within Kurdish disputed territories. In other words, the Kurds, the Kurds are helping the Christians. They, it mentions later on in the article, I'll get to it, a lot of really cool Islamics, Islamists were living with a lot of really cool Christians. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. The, the, this problem isn't, isn't among the people for the most part that are living here. Miriam Farahat from Mosul was one of the 5,000 who have now fled for the second time from the advancing and increasingly sophisticated Islamic State who took the weapons that the United States government donated to people who weren't strong enough to keep them. After overrunning Mosul two months ago, the militant group began implementing its own rule of law, resembling a Taliban-style interpretation of Islam, which is death, which includes the complete covering of women and draconian punishments for smoking and not adhering to the newly formed Islamic State principles. You know, you can, you can literally... You might want to skip ahead a few seconds. Women can have their clitoris burned off for not covering their whole body. These are the kinds of people we were talking about. The kinds of people that I would not like to have a beer with. And I don't even have... Uh, never am I going to say it. Everyone is scared to go into the street in case Daesh, that's the Islamic State, get to them. Farahat, a Sunni Muslim, told Mint Press News. Again, he's Muslim. I've got no problem with the man. They take the children, the women, the boys, they give them different names, and they can't run away. When Dash catches you, you have to work with them, and you cannot run away from them. Our ideas for life are so different from these people, we don't understand how they think, but we know that their beliefs are different from ours. That's because these people are insane. I don't care whether America has wrongly given them money or not. I wish we hadn't. But that does not justify... You can give me a lot of money. I'm not going to go cutting people's heads off and mutilating women. It ain't going to happen. Um, I'll say this. Ron Paul's right that we don't need to be militarily involved in there again, for those of you that read that recent article. But I do really think uh, humanitarian aid is great. I like that we're dropping food and supplies there, and if that makes me a bad libertarian, then so be it. But I am very happy about that. Um, the situation for people like Farat in Kazir was dire. Food, water, shelter, and medical supplies were severely rationed. Hundreds are rumored to have fled into Kurdish mountains in the north for safety, a century-old sanctuary from dangers for Kurds in the past and now for Iraqis. And uh, listen to the last sentence that's in this paragraph. Others have attempted to relocate to refugee camps with Kurdistan Autonomous Region, both Muslims and Christians, of all sects, are fleeing Islamic State control, which is quickly expanding. Have I now explained the Islamists that I have no problem with and those that I think are scum? Camps have started to appear in parks and places of worship around the capital of Erbil, as well as the outlying towns of Kalak and Ankawa, with Christians and Muslims offering refuge to one another. There's some, correct, there's some uh, good, good news on the correct views today. And it's some of the only good news there is. I mean, look at, look at what's going on here. It says um, th they were listening to cries of Allah Akbar, meaning God is great. They like to say that before they cut off heads. Um, outside their city, the people of Quarkrash had to fled. It fled, it said, many on foot. We reported on that a couple of shows ago. You can look it up. It's on the channel. 
Um, some of them were forced to uh, just live under rags and man-made little little plastic tents and 100 degree temperatures under trees with blankets draped over bushes. Uh, Rania Nawar, a teenager from uh, Korakash, told Mitt Press that her life had been turned upside down by the exodus. She believes she will never be able to return to her home again. They took my future away from me, Nawar said. My dreams are gone. I want to go home, but if Iraq doesn't want us to go home, then let us go somewhere else. Don't keep us here as refugees. If I can't go home, I don't want to live in Iraq. Can you blame her? I mean, even Egypt has said that what these scum are doing is spitting on what Islam is. This is not, this is not what it's meant to be. It says, for every one Christian who came in here, there were five Muslims. Why is this happening to us? We have not done, this is the way it's worded, we have not done treat everyone like equals. I am old, but I want my sons to have a better future. That's what they're looking at over there, friends. And it's pretty bleak. It really is. But I wanted to give you some good news, at least about the two sides, because it's not always Christians and Muslims at each other's throats. In most places, we live together just fine. The Army 3D printed food it will give soldiers personalized meals. This was the most unusual story I've ever heard, and I guess this is good news too. It really is. So, Three-dimensional printing is changing the way that the Army treats injuries and builds bombs, and now the technology is poised to revolutionize, revolutionize how soldiers are fed. 3D printing will allow the Army to print food on demand from pasta to pizza and tailor its nutritional content to an individual soldier's needs. A little bit of science news here. I was really happy with this. Um, you can't go wrong there. For those of that might be new to the topic, 3D printing, uh, most of, most famous, unfortunately, by uh, th uh, making 3D guns. And I don't mean unfortunately because I'm against it. I'm for it. I just mean that, unfortunately, and that the only thing anybody ever knows is that which makes the biggest headlines. Um, you can print your own gun to some degree, and uh, if you do it right, you blow your hand off. But they work if you do it right. Uh, again, I'm for it. Um, and done shows on it. You can look it up. It's also printing limbs. It, it, it's a printer that kind of makes these things for you. Well, I didn't know you could do it with food, but that looks like uh, exactly what we're witnessing here. Feeding thousands of soldiers in the wilderness of a far-flung battlefield has never been an easy task. The food served to army personnel needs to be unspoiled, nutritious, and reasonably tasty. For decades, soldiers have dined on army-supplied meals ready to eat, or MREs, and are usually pretty unappetizing, it says, and limited to 24 options like beef taco filling, served in a tinfoil bag. The walking taco, at some point. You couldn't even get a pizza until last year when army researchers developed a groundbreaking pizza that stays fresh for three years. No, uh, 3D printing could change that. While most current methods for 3D printing food pile layers of nutritional goo on top of each other, other, the Army, it says, is looking to use ultrasonic agglomeration, which binds particles together by shooting ultrasonic waves at them. This approach, explained by Army Magazine in its July issue, affords them great flexibility when it comes to printing varied meals adding some additional options to the menu. It says you would like a sandwich where I would like ravioli. You can print what you want and eliminate food waste, Mary Scarra, an army food technologist at the Netric Soldier Research Development and Engineering Center in Massachusetts told Defense One. Leave it in my comment line. Has anybody ever heard of this before? This is wonderfully odd. Even more importantly, 3D printing for engineered meals tailored to individual soldiers' needs. If you are lacking in a nutrient, you could add that nutrient. If you were lacking protein, you could add meat to a pizza. Lauren Olazik told uh, NSRDEC, researcher, Army Magazine. Right now, researchers at uh, NerdStack are focusing on producing small snacks with the technology, but soon we'll be able to print more complex meals like pasta. Anybody try one of these, make sure you get a hold of me. I'll put you on the show. Uh, it also mentions that this could be excellent for uh, people who need specific dietary needs. 
let's face it, this is all around wonderful news on The Correct Views. And that's what you're listening to, The Correct Views. I got a couple more stories. Don't don't leave. I've got a dog that's a mayor coming up. Yes, don't leave. I swear to God, I'm, a dog is a mayor. Don't leave. I just want to let you know that the Seacrest Motel does not have a dog for the mayor up there. But they do have wonderful rooms. Wonderful rooms. So when you go to Sandusky, you go to Cedar Point. Hollow Weekends is coming. It is awesome. For those of you that like the theatrical side of Halloween, I don't mean someone that burns a goat in their yard, but somebody that genuinely likes the holiday for the fun, spooky aspect of it. Well, guess what? You're going to want to stay at the Seacrest Motel. Beats the tar out of the price of any other rooms. And trust me, I we get passes up there. Never found a nicer room. And th- extremely reasonable rates. How do you get those reasonable rates? You tell Vicky that you heard about it on TCB. That would be the correct views. As promised, friends, at myfoxnewyork.com. Are you ready? Dog elected mayor in Minnesota. I love it. Now, I, look, we already have one dog possibly for president. It all depends how well Hillary does. So, I mean, he beat her to it. I am so happy about this. This is, this is, this is, I get, I, you can only do so much kill him, kill him news. I think it's uh, Michael Savage that said you can only do so much Republican, good, Democrat, bad. Although, again, I wouldn't say either one was good, but you get the point. Listen to this. A small Minnesota village has a new mayor. Duke, the dog, is Carmendant's newest mayor. No, Cor- Cormorant, excuse me. The 12 people who live there elected the seven-year-old dog as its leader. <laughs> Duke may not understand politics too well, but it's been doing a great job guarding the town. He even makes sure cars aren't going past the speed limit. I'm not sure how that would be, but it's interesting. Duke will be sworn in on Sunday. He won't be getting a salary, but the pet store has agreed to donate a year's supply of dog food to reward Duke for his service. So the 12 people elected a, uh, a dog as mayor. Considering how bad our politicians are, that town of 12 people will probably be bringing in more money than New York City by the end of the dog's term. So congratulations, wise choice, and I'm only being half facetious. Dailymail.uk, again, risk the pop-ups and refreshing at your own apparel. She became extremely sad. Carers for the world's most intelligent gorilla claimed she was close to tears following the news of Robin Williams' death, death 13 years after video captured the two becoming fast friends. I tried to figure out exactly how I wanted to remember Robin Williams beyond what I said uh, Saturday with the Media Speaks and the, uh, the response that I left in the comment line of uh, Mark Dice video. We're not likely to see another talent of that caliber in our lifetime anytime soon. That's that's how good I think he was. Okay, it's that it, he was something very special, and everybody covered a million different things about it. Well, I guarantee you didn't hear anyone do this one, and that's probably why you tuned in. So thanks. News of Robin Williams' untimely death hit particularly close to home for famed sign language gorilla Coco who handlers say was moved nearly to tears by the somber mood shared by all at her Northern California home. Staff at the Gorilla Foundation, like much of America, is mourning after hearing the news Monday. Robin Williams visited their center in 2001 and quickly befriended Coco, making her laugh for the first time in six months. For those of you that don't know, this is a gorilla that can talk with sign language. It is smart enough and intelligent to talk. It's smarter than, uh, and it might not be smart enough to be mayor, but I got my vote. So when they explained to Coco, who is fluent in American Sign Language, what a dear friend of the center had died, she soon became sad and was pictured hunched over with a quivering lip. This, you know, and it's got pictures of Robin Williams here. And again, before I get I slapped on my comment line, I know he was a major leftist, but he was a good person. I would be very surprised to to hear him described uh, as anything but a genuinely good person, just from the interviews, and I don't mean the parts he's played. I mean him. Um, I think he was probably a pretty good guy. 
And did he ever do anything wrong? I'm sure he did in 63 years. But still, I have a feeling he was one of the nicer people in that uh, whole circle of people. Coco even signed the words crying lip, lip being the word for woman, as she watched staff reacting to their news. She became extremely sad, Coco's caretaker, Dr. Penny Patterson, wrote on Coco.org. Footage from the day Coco and Williams met was uplifting as the suicide is tragic. The actor arrived there as a stranger to the gorilla with a personal interest in ape conversation. He left as Coco's friend. Um, they truly appeared to bond as the gorilla insisted on Williams tickling her and tried on sunglasses much to his delight. It says Coco smiles which were all caught on camera, were the first in months since her good friend, a 27-year-old gorilla named Michael, had passed away. It said Robin's ability to just hang out with Coco, the gorilla, and in men it's become one of its closest friends, was extraordinary and unforgettable, Patterson wrote. So, I mean, interesting story. You're going to want to go look that up. You really will. And uh, Robin Williams, rest in peace, my friend. You were a pleasure to watch. My heart goes out to your family. God bless. CBCSocial.com Baltimore brings us to the dum de dum de dum de dum dum de of the day. And that's what we've got. Parents complain about woman pole dancing in Ocean City. Now, these are the same parents that'll take their kid to the circus. And the girl comes out with these things that barely cover, you know, barely cover her breasts or butt. I have no problem with it. I DJ in an adult club. That's not my point. Um, they take them to the circus and they do these rope dancing and you got fire breathers and bikinis. Now, you tell me how rope dancing is any damn different than pole dancing. Never mind, you won't because it isn't. This is the stupidest and this is why it gets the dumdy of the day. Ocean City, Maryland. And I'm not, it's it, the, 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 uh, the dumdy isn't for Ocean City. The dumdy is for the people that complained. Ocean City bills itself as a family-friendly destination, but a Vegas-style street performer hit the boardwalk this summer, creating a wave of controversy. Mary Babala reports parents are complaining, but police say that their hands are tied. Why are they complaining that she's pole dancing if she's wearing appropriate clothing? A woman dressed in a bikini pole dancing on the Ocean City Boardwalk is drawing crowds and criticism. D don't go to the circus for crying out loud. Ocean City leaders say they have no power, nor should they, to ask her to leave because two years ago the ACLU, as they should have, sued the town over the street performer's First Amendment rights and won. Basically, the street performers can go up there as long as they aren't breaking any laws and they're performing and exercising their First Amendment rights. Wisely said Mayor Rick Meehan. They have every right to be on the boardwalk. So, call Rayor Rick Meehan and let him know that he's on the right side of this. The dumdy isn't just about calling out stupidity. It's about praising people that do well. And I would like to praise uh, Mayor Rick Meehan here. The Ocean City Police Department has received dozens of complaint calls on the pole dancer. Many visitors are stunned by the performance. If you look at it, she's not doing anything wrong. She's got the, what amazing talent is what she is. Some people say at night the boardwalk has more of a club feel and less of a family atmosphere. Yeah, God forbid you should watch somebody master a complicated art form that is beautiful to watch. I think it's very offensive, says Jennifer Drescher. Uh... They shouldn't be allowed to want the boardwalk to seeing people pole dancing. Yeah, because there's something wrong with somebody dancing. That's such a great mortal sin. Idiot, morons. Another idiot. Elijah Etheridge. I'm all in favor of self-expression, but there is a limit, and I think this is a public place. She's dressed as well as anybody else is. To read any more of this, I'm just going to lose my mind. Friends, you get the point. That's the dumb the other day for Elijah Etheridge, Jennifer Dreschler, and... Uh, I was happy about this. It's not going to go away. The Constitution of the United States is not going to change. But we have to do whatever to make sure we got the public out on the boardwalk. And it, she is properly dressed, doing an art form that is just as hard on a pole as it is on a rope or a piece of satin, which you pay a fortune to go see with your family at the circus. That's why you won the dumb of the day. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. DeGange signing off. 
asking you to look up the work of Mike McLaughlin on Facebook.com. He is a writer of amazing stories. Also, go to TheMediaSpeaks.com. Look up the work of Kyle Court, D. Lake, and myself. And if you're still listening, leave a comment. When you do, I'll promote your favorite charity on my next show as long as it's not offensive. Good night, friends. God bless.